When you need a custom t-shirt for your business, organization, sports team, or special event, CorelDRAW has all the tools you need to create your own t-shirt designs. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to create a design with objects and text, and how to create a mock-up of the final product. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample design file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along. We're starting with the sample design file, containing the two-color logo for the t-shirt. This logo will be the basis of a design for a community organization. If you want to try this with your own logo, use File Import to bring in your design. First, let's adjust some settings to make the workflow easier. For easy access to the logo colors, I'll choose Window, Color Palettes, Add Colors from Document. This adds the colors to the Document Palette along the bottom, making it easy to use swatch colors for fills and outlines. I'll also choose View Alignment Guides so that it will be easy to align and position objects. If this option is grayed out for you, your snaps are likely turned off. Disable Snap Off first, then turn on Alignment Guides. I'll now set the page dimensions to use as a reference while designing. For my t-shirt, I'm using a center chest design, which needs to fit within a 1000 pixel square border. I'll enter these values in the Page Dimensions field on the property bar, and the page border updates. Other t-shirt design options include pocket left chest, full chest, or full back. Check with your print service for their recommended image sizes. My last setup task is the background color. I'm going to stick with a white t-shirt, and later in this video we'll place the logo on a t-shirt image and experiment with colors. But if you're planning to print your design on a colored t-shirt, you can change the document background color to see how it will look. I'll choose Layout, Document Options, and open the Background tab. This background will be solid, and I'll open the Color Picker. If you have specific logo or branding color values, you can switch to the color sliders, choose a color mode such as RGB, and enter exact values. Be sure to uncheck Print and Export Background, then click OK. I'm going to undo to go back to a white background. My first design element will be a circular frame around the logo. I'll activate the Ellipse tool on the toolbar and click, drag, and release. To assign the correct dimensions, I'll enter 1000 for width and height in the Object Size fields in the property bar. To position the circle, I'll switch to the Pick tool, and with the circle still selected, I'll press P to center it on the page. To change the frame, I'll double-click the Outline Color Swatch on the right side of the status bar. This opens the Outline Pen window, where I can change the outline properties. I'll change the width to 8 mm, change the position to Inside Outline, and for color, I'll use the eyedropper to sample the green from a leaf. I'll also enable Scale with Object, so that the outline will remain proportional to other objects when scaled, and click OK. I want to add a few pieces of text to the design, a slogan, and the name of the organization. The slogan will go below the tree graphic. I'll activate the text tool, click approximately where I want the slogan, and start typing in the default font properties, including a line break. Switching to the pick tool, I'll change the font and size, add italics, and choose center alignment. Because alignment guides are enabled, I can zoom in and move the text so that its center aligns with the center of the design. To change text color, I'll click the brown swatch on the document palette. The next text objects will be the organization name, which will follow along the top and bottom of the frame. This is called fitting text to a path. I'll activate the text tool again, and this time hover over the circle. I'll click when the cursor switches to the Fit Text to Path pointer. As before, I'll type my text and press Ctrl A or Command A on the Mac to select the characters. Now I can change the font and size. Switching to the Pick tool, I'll click and drag to move the text into place within the frame, 
using the red line as a centering guide. If needed, I could adjust the offset from the path or the distance along the path. I'll click a white swatch to set the text color. For the lower text, I'll use the same process, fit text to path, and change font and size. To orient the text correctly, I'll click mirror text vertically and also horizontally. Now, with the pick tool, I can move the text into place, adjust distance from path and offset if needed, and change color. I'll now add a t-shirt image as a background to see how the printed shirt will look. First, I'll add a new page. Images and other objects can be found on the Assets Docker or Assets Inspector on the Mac. I'll choose Window, Dockers or Inspectors, Assets, where I have several vector and raster images already installed. You may only see a few assets if only the starter pack is installed. To load more assets, including the t-shirt image, I'll click Get More and filter the list for only free content. The bundle I want is the Layout Pack, which I'll open, then download and install. Now I have many more assets, and when I click Get More again, the Layout Pack appears in My Library. I can see this in the Welcome screen as well, in the Store, and in My Library. Returning to our drawing file, I'll click the Browse icon in the Assets Docker, which lists the folders installed in the Corel Image Library. The folder I want is Blank Objects, which has all sorts of mock-up images, such as coffee cups, water bottles, etc. I'll scroll down about halfway to find the blank t-shirt. I can drag in the image or double-click to place it at the center of the page. With the t-shirt image on page 2, I'll go back to page 1 to copy the design objects. First, I'll use the Pick tool to draw a selection marquee around the entire design, then press Ctrl or Command G to group everything. In the Objects Docker or Inspector, I now have a group of five objects, including the tree design, which is itself a group. The two Fit to Path text objects are listed within the ellipse whose path they use. With the group still selected, I'll press Ctrl or Command C to copy, then switch to page 2 and press Ctrl or Command V to paste. This t-shirt image isn't to scale, and the design appears a bit too large. I'll resize a bit by dragging a corner handle and move it to the approximate center. The actual size of the design on page 1 remains the same, which is what will actually be printed. Now let's make the mock-up look a bit more realistic. With the design group still selected, I'll activate the Transparency tool and choose Uniform Transparency. A transparency value of about 30% blends the design nicely into the shirt. Now I can test out some different t-shirt colors. I'll select the t-shirt image using the Pick tool and choose Effects, Adjust, Replace Colors. On the Properties Docker, the Replace Colors effect is added on the FX tab. To define the original color, I'll click the eyedropper and sample a pixel of the t-shirt. For the new color, I can use the eyedropper to choose a swatch, or open the color picker and find a color. The HSL sliders can be used for further color adjustment. The last step is to use File Save to save the file in CDR format. It's important to keep a CDR version for future changes or for reference. Print services may require different file formats, such as PDF or JPEG. This can be done via File Export, or I can find the format I need in the Save as Type menu. Depending on the selected format, after clicking Export, you'll see a set of options such as Pages to Export, Colors, Compression and Bleeds, etc. Again, check with your print service to confirm these details. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating a t-shirt design in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample design file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along.